Okay, it's uh, September 18th, 2021. And now that I've got the uh, Segway all put together the way I want to, now I gotta take it apart again. <laughs> all right, I'm all ready to start. Let's see how long it takes. I went online and downloaded the entire user and repair manuals for the X2. As you can see, I put it in this really nice leather binder with a clear cover over it, so I can take a. So I took a picture of the uh, the X2 and uh, put the information on here, indicating that this whole folder is for the Segway. So you open it up, take a look. As you can see, it's for the uh, i4 X2 X2 Turf Parts Replacements Guide. October 2008 and actually I think that's the latest date on this uh, particular manual this manual is really nice I mean it has all the information in here parts and uh, how you work on the parts what to do with them um, it's a very detailed book and if there's anything you want to know about working on a uh, Segway this is the one to get now, towards the back of the book, there's another section called User Manual for those vehicles. And it also is very informative. It tells you everything about the Segway and how you should be riding it and what you should not be doing. Another very informative manual. So, if you're going to buy a Segway, I highly suggest that you go online, look up these two manuals like I did, print them out if you have like a, it's only like 80 or 90 pages and they're both printed on both sides so it's it's a big manual and it's going to be helpful I suggest you get one well you probably won't because 99.9% .9 of you will never buy a Segway but if you do that's it's a good thing to have okay so now it's a pretty hard surface to be working on, and I'm an old guy, so I need something soft to put my knees on. Uh, I think an old cushion from an old couch would work just fine. We threw away a couch one day, and I thought, hey, I may need those uh, cushions to, for working, and it, they work really nice. So let's get going. Okay. Let's do this. Very well, hopefully, that'll just pull right off, which it does. All right, that's one side. I won't video the other side because I just showed you how to do it, so I'll just go ahead and take it off. Add to the stack. Ah. That fell down nicely, so this comes out. I wonder if there's a right side and left side. Probably not, but I'm going to keep them in order just in case. So that's the right side. No, that's the left side. And this is the right side. Wow, it's looking pretty bare. All right, let's get to it. Okay, back to the instructions. Let's see now. Remove the lean steer frame, I just did that. Remove the mats, I did that, but not in order. Remove the wheels, I did that first instead of fourth. That's all right. Remove the fender, I just did that. Uh, remove the fender and frame assembly. I just did that. Remove the front and rear fascia trim. I just did that. Remove gearbox trim cover. I just did that. Now it says remove the gearbox fasteners using a 38 ratchet. All right, T45, uh, T45 I don't have. I'm gonna have to look for it and then maybe go to the hardware store before I continue any further. So let's put this on hold. You know, it's amazing what you can find in your garage and 
have what you don't even know you have. I was just about ready to get in the car and go to the hardware store because I'm missing this number 45 T-wrench. So I, just before I leave, I, I look in an unlikely place and I got a whole another set of those things. And by golly, there's a 45 right there. I've even got a 55, which I didn't have up here. I only had a 50. But I need to reorganize my garage a little bit. Now, I thought I had it pretty organized, but I had no clue that I had those extras. So <laughs> let's use that and get going. Okay, I listened to one of the T45 bolts, and now I'm going to back it out slowly with the drill. Yeah, not that slowly. <laughs> All right, there's one of them. Now I'll break the other one loose. Slowly, so I don't strip the, the, the key wrench. Okay, I'll back it out with the drill. All right, there's a second one. Now the third one's gonna be the problem. Okay, so in order to get the, the third T45 bolt out, it's over here and you can't see it. You have to take this fascia off here too, first. So I already took the, the screw out, the bolt out there, pull that off and uh, as you can see, I've already taken the bolt out. So I'm gonna take it out. All right, so that's the third one. So you got one, two, and three. So those three T45 bolts are out. Theoretically now, I should be able to remove that fairly easy. We'll see what happens. Okay, so here's the three bolts I just took out. Before I lose them, I'll add them to my pile of bolts over here so I won't forget where they are. Because I have forgotten a lot and looked a lot at other bolts. So there they all are right there. Okay, I just finished with uh, item number nine. Remove gearbox fasteners, the three screws. I just uh, put them up in the box. Now let's go to ten. Remove gearbox using a rubber mallet. Gently tap on the housing. All right. Let's see if that works. By the way, I don't know if you have a rubber mallet sitting around or not. I got a lot of tools, but I never, I don't have a rubber mallet. So I went down to the hardware store and got one. All right, let's see if this works. Well, here goes nothing. Coming loose. And yeah, one more tap to do it. There we go. Came loose. Nice. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That's what needs to be replaced, evidently. Here is the other one, the brand new one. And this has got to come out. This one's got to go in. So, I put the new coupler and the old coupler together here so I can see what they look like. This is the old coupler, obviously, because you can see the, the white plastic flakes on the inside. And basically, that is what was kind of wearing out, I'm, I hope anyway. You can see the new coupling has no flakes on it because it's brand new. And this is the new coupling upside down, goes on the other side. So hopefully, I can just slide this new coupling in there, which doesn't look too hard. And basically, it's going to slide, as I mentioned, right in there. So, that 
will go down there like that and slide down inside. Now, since the old one slid right off, that's a probably a very good indication that it was worn out. So I have no doubt that this one's gonna take a little tapping going down. Well, let's see what the instructions say. So it looks like a, a dry steel wolf pad will work. You just have to kind of work on it in a little while. So I think that's much better than trying to use a solvent that would eat away at that. Last thing you want to do is have other problems. Okay, that's better. I'll work on it a little more. Okay, I got it PDC with a dry pad, so that seems to work. Okay, now we've come to the part where I'm very concerned that I'm going to do it right. And uh, if I don't, I don't want to think about it. Anyway, the instructions say this is an important part right here because if you take this coupling and put it on the shaft incorrectly and get it twisted or binded or somehow it doesn't go down exactly straight, you've got a major, major problem. And so I need to make sure that that's straight. So what I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I've got two pieces of wood out here. I'm gonna get this level. First of all, I'm gonna bring these, that part over to there like that. I'll put it on top of there and to help level it out. And then I'm gonna put this level in here. See how level it is, which it's not at all. And so that means I'm going to have to raise this end over here up until it's low. So how do I do that? Find another piece of wood and put it under this side? No, I don't think so. So what I'm going to do is to the other side. As you can see, there's nuts on the other side. I'll just unscrew these nuts a ways until it's level again. All right, let's check that out. Let's see if that's level. Well, it's better, but it's not level. Let's go a little further. Half turn, put this back on here. There, yeah, perfect. Now that I've got that perfectly level, I've got to make sure that when I put this uh, this on here and hammer it down with a rubber billet hammer, I do it level. Make sure this is level as well. All right, cross my fingers. Let's see what happens. Okay, so when I take this uh, old one that I just took out and put it up here and turn it just a little bit, I can line it up with that shaft perfectly. So theoretically, all I have to do is knock it down with a rubber mallet. However, when I take the old one off and put the new one on that hasn't been touched, it's, uh, it doesn't line up like the other one does because the other one's worn and it's easy to get onto that shaft. But this is not worn at all, so I have to make sure it's exactly where it's supposed to be before I start hammering on it. Well, I think that's it right, right there. We'll see. Okay, as I look down the hole of this coupling, I can see where it's lining up and it's lining up right there now if i could just tap it down a little bit i'm not going to use this 
to do it all the way with just a little tap. Okay, I kind of got it started. I want to make sure it's level that way. And level that way. So if I do it that way, continue to go down at that angle. I should be all right. So I'll put another piece of hardwood right on top of here. And double check to make sure it's level, which it is. I'll use the mallet to tap right in the very middle. And if I give it a good hard hit, it should go down straight. Can I do that? I don't know. I'm going to try it though. Here it goes. What'd they do? Hey, it's still level. All right. It went down a little bit. Let's try it again. Okay, I think it's going down more. Going down. I think it's almost all the way down. Take a look. You can see it's uh, all the way down. Now, the big question is, is it level? Hey, look at that. Perfectly level. Both ways. Success. All right, I feel better now. Now all I have to do is do the other side exactly the same way. All right. One task down, a few more to come. Well, now that I got it in without breaking the coupling, I know there's probably some technicians out there if they're if they watch this, they're going to say that guy's crazy. He could have broken the coupling by hitting it on the top sides like that. And maybe he should have used a socket and, and gone down the middle like this, and then tapped it down like this. Well, that might have worked too, but I did it the way I did it, and it worked, and it seems to be in perfect condition. So uh, I don't recommend that anybody do it themselves that way, but uh, that's the way I did it, and it seems to work for me. Maybe I'll try the other one this way. Maybe, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Actually, that's probably not the best way to do it, and maybe it's better to get a, a larger one and go right on the top of this thing instead of surrounding it go right on the top because this is what has to go down and put that on the top and then put my board over the top and give it a couple of slugs that may be the best way to do it I don't know somebody tell me if I did it wrong okay so these uh, T45 bolts that are going to go back in to the gearbox and when I bolt it back to the Segway they're pretty filthy. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, I'm going to clean the threads a bit and uh, take care of that. It's hard to see if threads, isn't it? Okay, well anyway, they're clean now, so uh, let's do it. Well, I put my camera down and cleaned up those threads a little more, and now they're crystal clear, very clean. And now I'm gonna put the uh, gearbox back on the Segway and put a little bit of uh, Loctite on these threads 
so uh, when I get it tight down, they're not going to back off. It's just going to stay there. That should work. Okay, last thing the instructions say is to, uh, when we start putting it back together, is to make sure that the uh, gearbox spacer, which is this, is nice and clean. And I'm going to clean it up in just a second here. Then uh, I'm going to uh, put it on. And then we go over to here where it tells you how to put the gearbox back on the Segway by gently tapping it with a rubber mallet. Let's do it. All right, so I cleaned up the uh, gearbox spacer, <clears throat> and that is uh, one area that I did use the razor blade on because it was just easier to use on, on that. So this goes, this hole right here is lined up with this hole right here, and these little things are go down in these small holes. So. That's how that goes in there, like that. Sits down nice and flush. Now, theoretically, I should be able to take that over to the Segway and uh, tap it right on. My only concern, obviously, is uh, this spacer falling out while I'm tapping it on. So I'll have to keep a close eye on it. Okay, so let's see what kind of trouble I can get myself into by tapping that gearbox back on the Segway. Wish me luck. Okay, so I don't need the bolts right away. All I have to do is make sure that these little studs here, this one and this one, go in these two holes. This one and this one. And then I can put the bolts in afterwards. Now, all I got to do is line this up. Make sure this spacer doesn't fall like this. Oh, there we got. Okay. So far, so good. All right, everything's lining up. Again, my only concern is. Uh, that little spacer falling down, so uh, I'll keep an eye on it while I'm uh, while I'm tapping this in. Back and forth. And it's still in. <laughs> Right, I did it. It looks good. As you can see, it's uh, it's nice and flush with that now. I watched that spacer; it stayed in where it was supposed to be. So now all I have to do is put those uh, T45 bolts in, torque it down to check on that torque and see how much it's supposed to be and oh put some loctite on those threads before I do so let's do that okay so now I'm ready to put the bolts uh, in back into the uh, gearbox and according to the manual here I need to torque those uh, bolts down to uh, 40 newton meters uh, newton meters comes out to 29 and a half pounds so what I need to do or what I already have done I've got my torque wrench out here and I don't know if you can see that or not but that's uh, Newton meters which I'm not going to use because I already converted to pounds so we'll go over to pounds and I've got it set on just 
a hair below 30. Well, let's go down to a half. Okay, so instead of uh, 29.8, let's, let's go back to 29.5, which is 29 and a half, which is 40 Newton meters. So tighten that, tighten that down and leave it there and uh, get it together. All right, take the cap off the Loctite. Put uh, a little bit on the uh, on the end of the threads. And then uh, put it in the hole. Snug it down a little bit. Don't have to go very far right now because I'm not tightening them right now. And do the same thing for the other two. Now that I know I've got the thread started, I can take the T45 socket and snug them down a ways. Not completely tight, but put down. One. Two. Three. All right, so they're snug down. Now all I have to do is torque them down. Let's get the torque wrench and torque them down to 29 and a half pounds. Okay, not all torque wrenches work the same way. Some have a, uh, a spring-loaded gauge on it. Others have a, uh, a clicking noise it makes when it gets up to the poundage you set it at. This particular one has a clicking noise. So, what I'm gonna do is put this on here push it down and when you hear the clicking noise that means it's uh, 29 and a half pounds I'm gonna tighten the other ones down equally and not just do one at a time so let's go over here do this one go down a ways Okay, click. You heard the click. Go down to the bottom one. There's the click. 29 and a half pounds on that one. And this one should be any second. 29 and a half on that one. Hey, we're all set. Okay, the right side gearbox is now complete. It has a brand new coupling in there, which should quiet down the noise that I was hearing. Hopefully that'll take care of it. Anyway, I feel good about the way this set turned out. So now all I have to do is do the left-hand side exactly the same way as I did the right-hand side. I won't video that because you already know, so um, I'll do it off camera and then I'll come back when I start putting the other stuff back on and we'll finish up. All right, see you later. Okay, this is the left side. I just took the uh, gearbox off. Doesn't really look any different than the other side. <laughs> the stud doesn't look like it's uh, loose or anything, so. I'm just going to assume that that's okay. Okay, it's a new day. Beautiful day, actually. September 20th, 2021. I'm ready to continue putting my Segway back together. I did get the other gearbox put on yesterday uh, at the last minute. And uh, it was fairly easy. After you do the first one, it makes the second one pretty easy. So it went pretty fast. So I've got it back on now. I got all the stuff ready to be put back on the Segway. Kind of a messy 
uh, work area, but uh, that's all right, no problem. I've got my Star Treks all ready to, to watch again. So let's get started on this thing. Put it back together and get it running and see how it works. All right, so let's put, you, put the front fascia back on. Go through this little, right there. Okay, so now the, uh, this nut extension needs to go on here to accommodate the kickstand. So, put this in. Tighten it down. Okay, so basically that's going to accommodate the kickstand right here as soon as I get around to it. Okay, in order to get the kickstand on, I've got to put the uh, front, actually the rear fascia on as well. So it'll go on here like this. And then this extension bolt will go in here. All right, now let's see if the uh, kickstand will fit on there. Okay, so now I'll attach the uh, front side of the kickstand to that extension nut. Hold off on tightening it down until I get the other side. All right. So now I got both sides of the uh, kickstand tightened down with the with the fascia on there as well. So that actually took a little more effort than I thought it was going to, just because the holes weren't lining up very well. In uh, but it finally did. So that's the main thing. It's done. So now I can connect the other side of the fascia and start putting everything together. Okay, connecting the fascia on the left side of the vehicle is gonna be a little easier because there's no, because there's no uh, kickstand over there to worry about. So uh, it's just a simple little screw. Goes in here, line it up, turn it in. and just screw it in. All right, now we're getting down to the last part of the hard stuff. So the last bolt in the fascia goes into the fascia on the, the right side. Actually, what is this? Yeah, no, that's the left side. Okay, this is the left side of the rear, rear left side of the fascia. So that goes in there. And that should do it. All right, so now all the hard work is done. Let's start putting the wheels on, putting it all back together. That shouldn't take too long. Okay, before I put the wheels back on, I gotta put the uh, gearbox cover and the fender frame back on. So that's just a matter of Putting in three bolts. One, two, three. Okay, now I've got uh, 
the gear covers and the fenders on both sides. Time to put the wheels back on. As you can see, there's uh, three nuts here, actually here. And these uh, screws are, these are 13 millimeter. So just uh, mount this up. Okay. Yeah, as soon as I get this uh, all back together, I'll test it and see if that I still have that little knocking noise. Although I was a little concerned because when I move this back and forth, I kind of hear a knocking noise here. You hear that? So, I don't think that has anything to do with the uh, couplings, I'm not sure. But anyway, we'll see. Okay, so now the uh, foot pads go back in. Done. Okay, pull it out in the sunlight a little bit. Such a, such a nice day. Next thing uh, to do is put the, uh, well, a number of things I could do, but I choose to put the uh, handlebar on. So let's do it. Okay, now all I got left to do is put the top of the handle on, uh, torque the wheels to uh, 22 pounds, and put the seat on, and try it out. Okay, the repair manual says to torque those uh, wheel nuts down to 22 pounds, but you know, personally it's probably no big deal. I mean, you're only going 12 miles an hour, so as long as you don't over tighten them and strip the threads, I don't see the uh, issue. But the manual says 22, so that's what I'll do. All right, so when you hear the click, that means it's at 22 pounds. One click. Two clicks. Three clicks. Let's go over one more time. One click and just a hair bit more. Two clicks, hair bit more. And three clicks, hair bit more. Okay, so I went to 24 pounds. No big deal, right? <laughs> All right, only one thing left to do. Is put the saddle back on and I'll be back in the saddle again. Now this has got to go up four holes so it's not touching here and so it's the right height. One, two, three. Let's uh, let's see what happens.
guess I better take the phone with me so I can record. See if there's any noise. All right, let's go for a short ride. Well, I don't hear anything so far. I guess that's a good sign, right? Well, there I heard it. Well, I don't think it was the couplings that's making that noise. Brand new couplings in there. Not sure what's going on, but uh, All we can do is keep trying. It seems like when I slow down is, is when that noise comes. So just going forward, there's no noise. I lean back. And the noise comes. Okay, now I'll lean back again. Well, it's September 21, 2021. I really like the Segway a lot. However, we got to do something about the little gremlin in here. And if anybody has an idea of what to do next, really appreciate it. I'd like to keep it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your help.